Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So the Christmas and New Year holidays are finally over and I always get a sense of sadness every time it does. Partly because obviously the holidays are fun and relaxing, uh, but partly also and probably more honestly, it's because I don't want to go back to work and I'm willing to bet that most of you feel this way as well. Now don't get me wrong, I do enjoy aspects of my job as much as it kills me. I can see that it has shaped me uh, to be the person that I am today and it constantly forces me to keep learning. But deep down, I know it's not what I want to do forever as it doesn't truly make me happy. So then I pondered the question, when can I retire from this? Or what I prefer to phrase it as, when can I be financially free? Now, the reason why I prefer to use the term financially free rather than retirement is because retirement actually means a lot of things to different people. For example, for myself, uh, I still actually see myself working when I am retired. Um, and that could differ from your version of retirement. Whereas financial freedom means that you are in a comfortable financial position to have the flexibility to say, you know what, I don't actually feel like working this month. I might take this month or actually several months off and go on holiday. But what does it take to be financially free? What is that magic number? Now, I want to go through an exercise with you on this video, and this exercise will determine how much you will need to be financially free. Now, you might be thinking to retire or be financially free, you might need millions and zillions of pounds, but I'm willing to bet that the number that you get at the end of this exercise will surprise you. I have a free Excel spreadsheet linked in the description box down below. Um, if you want to make full use of this video, I would highly suggest that you open up that Excel spreadsheet and follow me along through this walkthrough. Um, or alternatively, you can watch the video and then go back to the Excel spreadsheet later on, uh, or just watch the video and I'm sure it will be enough to enlighten you. So without further ado, I'm Kwasan from Financial Madness, helping you be better with your money. So before we get into the spreadsheet, there are a few pointers that I do want to run by you. So the first one is the accuracy. So as much as I would love for this spreadsheet to tell you exactly how much you would need to retire or be financially free, it's not going to. And this is mostly down to time. Time is our primary limited resource. And for most of us, we don't know how long is left. Now, every day we give up some of our time in exchange for an income so we can actually live. And we do that because A, we've got to pay some bills, uh, B, we actually want to enjoy life, but also C, we also put money aside so that we can use it later on in life once we reach to a point where we don't want to rely on our jobs for an income. So what this exercise will do will give you an indication of what number you need to aim for for you to achieve financial freedom, but specifically achieve financial freedom before the standard UK retirement date, which in this country ranges from 55, 57, to 68, which is the current state pension age. Secondly is the logic in determining how we get to this financial freedom number. So in this spreadsheet, we're gonna go through a bottoms up approach. So to use this method, we have to understand what our future outgoings are likely to be. So for example, looking at our fixed outgoings like utility bills, mobile contracts, um, council tax bills, mortgage repayments, although ideally if you are aiming for early financial freedom, you don't want to have that kind of cost associated in there. So those are fixed outgoings, but we also want to look at variable and luxury outgoings because again, we do want to enjoy our financial freedom life. So things like going out to restaurants or going on holidays as a few examples. So by doing it this way, we understand how much our ideal retirement life will cost us. That is why I prefer the bottoms up approach, because in all honesty, we could probably achieve financial freedom a lot earlier, but we do want to enjoy some perks here and there. The idea behind this is that we want to aim for a retirement that we actually want. So by determining the cost of the lifestyle, we can then determine how much it will cost you to be financially free. I've also added in some additional logic, which I haven't actually seen offered widely elsewhere, but they are crucial to our financial planning. I look at the impact of any state or private pension that you may be entitled to, because remember, these are potential income streams that you may be getting, but they are locked away until a certain age. So this should leave us with a number that determines how much you will actually need to be financially free at a certain age, whilst knowing that other income streams will unlock in the future once you do become of age. Sounds pretty cool, right? At least I, I think it is. I was totally nerding out over this spreadsheet. Uh, so hopefully it is useful to you all. And lastly, the closer you are to your financial freedom target, the more accurate this spreadsheet is likely to be. 
and that's because you have a better idea of what your future costs um, are going to be like. So I would encourage you to revisit these numbers later on to see if these numbers actually change the closer you get to your financial target. All right, that is enough chit chat for now. So let's get straight into the spreadsheet. So the link to the spreadsheet is in the description box down below. When you do go onto it, you will notice that the spreadsheet is locked. And that is because I don't want anyone to override the formulas. So for you to actually use it, uh, just download your own copy. And if you're unsure how to do that, if you go to the download your own copy tab that I put here, I've got two ways that you can actually do this. So follow those instructions and download your own copy. If you still have issues, Feel free to reach out to me on Instagram or via email. So let's move on to the calculator. So everything that you need is through steps one and seven. So let's go to step one. Uh, so this one is fairly straightforward. Just fill in your current age. I myself, I'll put 28. Step two, we want to put the age we want to be financially free. I'm going to aim for 45 in this case. So that's going to be at least 10 years earlier than the standard UK retirement age, which is between 55 and 57. Now, now step three is change the default end date. Now, I don't think I could have made this sound more soulless if I tried, but yeah, anyway, there's no two ways about it. As morbid as it is, this is trying to guess how much time we have left. The UK has an average life expectancy of 81 to 82 years. So I added another buffer on top so in this example, I'll be aiming for 86, which is just above the average. Obviously, feel free to change this number as you see fit, but I'll keeping it to 86 just for average's sake. Moving on to step four, this is now looking at the UK state pension. So the first question asks, at which age will you be able to claim pension from the state? Now your state pension age may differ depending on your sex and age. So if you are unsure, click on this link, which takes you to a government website where you'll be able to quickly find out what your state pension age is. For me, the age is 68. The next point is forecasting how much state pension you're going to have. Now, for those that don't know, the amount of state pension is determined by how many qualifying national insurance contributions you have made. Check out my earlier video on that state pension if you do want to learn more. But based on my forecast, I'll be able to aim for the maximum state pension, which stands currently at 9,339 pounds and 20 pence per year. Again, if you are unsure which number to put, click on this link and this will take you to a government tool which will do the forecast for you. Getting this forecast will take a little bit longer uh, because you do have to sign up to the platform. But other than that, it is relatively straightforward. Now, step five, this is where we put details about our private pension. So the way I have designed this is more tailored to forecasting how much you will have in your workplace pension. But you can still use this to forecast any personal pensions you may have. And I'll be sure to leave some instructions on how to do this. So yeah, let's go through step five. So the first question is, what is your salary? In this example, I'm going to put 30,000 pounds. The next question asks, what is the current value of your pension pot? So in this example, I'm just going to pretend we are starting from scratch. So I'm going to put zero pounds. But obviously, if you do have any value in your private pension, be sure to put that number in this box here. Now, the next two questions are based on your contributions and the employer's contributions to your private pension. Now, when you have enrolled by default, you will need to be contributing 8% to your pension. And usually this is set up by 5% of the contribution is coming from yourself and 3% from the employer. But obviously check with your employer to understand what the contribution rates are. But again, I'm going to be putting the minimum requirement for this demo. So I'm going to put 5% for my own contribution and 3% from the employer. The next is the annual expected return. Um, so I've put 6%, which is a fairly reserved number, but it is a good estimation for long-term growth. And finally, the age at which you can claim the private pension. The earliest you can actually claim your private pension is 55, but this will be changing to 57 from 2028. So in my case, 57 will be the earliest number that I can put in here. Um, but of course you can pick a later date if you choose. So based on this information, the spreadsheet will forecast how much you are likely to have in your private pension. Now I have split this into two segments so you can better understand the logic. So the first number is predicted value whilst employed slash contributing. So in this example, I will be contributing from the age of 28 and until 45, which is my target financial freedom date. So up until 45, my pension pot is forecasted to be 67,710 pounds. But post 45, it's going to be another 12 years until I can actually access my private pension. So although I won't be contributing to it because obviously I have retired or I'm financially free, it is still earning a 6% return, which then means I'll have just over £136,000 in my private pension pot 
when I turn 57. So I hope that will make sense. It's just another logic that I've put in there to make the accuracy of this estimation a little bit better. So moving on to the final steps, six and seven, and I'll mention these together because they kind of go hand in hand. So this exercise will actually be providing you with two financial freedom numbers. And the way I've split this is by distinguishing what your necessity lifestyle is. So this is what you want your lifestyle to be at financial freedom at a bare minimum and what your comfortable lifestyle will look like. So this includes all the necessities plus a few extra luxuries. Things in your necessity lifestyle can be things like paying for bills, uh, food, transport costs, insurance costs, going on that one holiday you want to do every year, et cetera, et cetera, you get the gist here. Whereas things in your comfort lifestyle will be your necessity lifestyle plus a little bit more. So maybe going on another two extra holidays per year, going to a theater show more regularly, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, and um, when you do go on the spreadsheet, I have split this by monthly costs. Now, again, you will need to use your imagination to think about what your costs will look like in the future because costs do change over your lifetime. For example, will you have paid off your mortgage by the time you reach your financial free age? If you want kids or pets, uh, you need to factor these costs in too. Now, some of these will be difficult to calculate, so you kind of have to go with the best guess average. So taking children as an example. So according to a Halifax study, they found that parents spend on average up to 450 pounds per month on their child. Now, it may be the case that you want to factor in this cost uh, for the entirety of your lifetime, but in most cases, it will only have an impact on a proportion of your life. So you need to figure out a number that best represents your case. So going back to this example, where my financial free target is at the age of 45, at that time in my lifetime, it's most likely that my children will be approaching adulthood. So there'll be less dependency on me, at least I hope, um, on me to provide financial support to them. So I need to find a cost that best represents this. So let's go through this example. So the numbers I've used um, are a mixture of aspects from my life, but also some other details for the purposes of this demo. You can see here that I have a mortgage um, with a repayment of 400 pounds per month. Although personally for me, I'll probably be excluding this from my actual plan because I do aim to pay off my mortgage before I reach financial freedom. Now, this doesn't mean that my repayments to my mortgage is going to be £400 per month. It may be a lot larger than this. But I figured that I will eventually pay off my mortgage at some point. So this, again, only will account for a proportion of my lifetime. So I have averaged it out. So I have reduced it to £400 per month. And that was my sort of best guess at figuring this out. Looking through the list, I've added utility bills, internet bills, TV subscriptions, etc., etc. Now, just going back to children, because we mentioned this earlier, I've accounted for 300 pounds, and this, again, was for two children. I've included one holiday in there, so, again, averaged it to about 100 pounds per year, so that's every year I'll have 1,800 pounds to spend on at least one holiday. I've also added some miscellaneous items to account for the occasional shop, going for dinner, etc., etc. Now, moving on to step seven, so this is where we calculate the comfort lifestyle that we want to have. So this already includes everything we've mentioned in step six for the necessity lifestyle, but this is somewhere where we can add additional perks. So here I've added additional holidays, shopping, nightlife, et cetera, et cetera. So do spend some time thinking about what you want to put in each of these categories. And if you are following along uh, on this tutorial, uh, feel free to pause the video now and we can move on to the results section together. So let's go through the results. So again, I have broken this down so you can better understand the logic that I'm using here. So based on my necessity lifestyle, this will cost me £1,601 per month. And my comfort lifestyle, this will cost me £2,071 per month. So this is going to be the equivalent of around about 19K and 25K respectively. Now these numbers are the net cost because remember, we do have to account for some taxation because our future income is still subject to income tax. So now we have to understand what our gross number is. So this is the number before it is going to be taxed. And that is the number we really need to aim for. So I've based the gross calculations on the current income tax rules. So again, this is another generalization because not everything that you will get uh, in the future is necessarily going to be taxed. Um, but again, it is impossible to pick out all these nuances. So um, I have done a generalization here. So this gives us a gross yearly cost of £20,800 for necessity and just under £28,000 for the comfort lifestyle. So that means that the gross total target that we actually have to aim for for the necessity lifestyle has to be 
just over £855,000 and for the comfort lifestyle around about £1.14 million. But again, this is not going to be the final amount. There are some other things we need to take into consideration. Firstly, it is the state pension. So in my example, I will be getting £9,339.20 from the state once I reach the age of 68. So this is additional income that I will be getting in the future. So I can actually minus this income from my actual target total pot as that will be covered from the state pension. So that brings down my new targets. So for the necessity lifestyle, I actually have to aim for 687,000 pounds and for the comfort lifestyle, 976,000 pounds. So the target pot has come down, but it can come down even further. Let's not forget that we do have our private pension to account for. And the earliest you can claim on this is 55 or 57, depending on your age. So in my example, the forecasted private pension for me was 136,247 pounds and 66 pence. So taking to that account, we can minus this off from our target total pot, because again, this money is going to be covered from once we reach the appropriate age of 55 or 57. So this gives me my final target total. So for me to be financially free at 45, I need to have 551,000 pounds for my necessity lifestyle, or 840,000 pounds to achieve my comfort lifestyle. Now this is of course assuming that we do get our private and state pension incomes kicking in a little bit later on down the line. Now I know these numbers are still difficult to achieve, but in all honesty, before I did this exercise, I found it really difficult to put a number on what financial freedom is. So I naturally just assumed it was always going to be a number that was out of reach, something like in the millions and zillions of pounds. So I was actually surprised to see that it wasn't as big of a number than I was initially thinking. Let me know in the comment section down below if it also surprised you, um, or maybe I'm the odd one out here, I don't know. So now that we know an estimation of what this number is, it becomes a bit more tangible and we can actually figure out if it is achievable or not. Um, perhaps maybe 45 is a bit too early to achieve for financial freedom, but play around with it. See what it's like when you reach 47, 50, 51. Uh, and you may actually surprise yourself to see that you can actually potentially reach a financial freedom number a lot earlier than normal retirement. The last thing on this spreadsheet is if we move to the summary page. So this paints just really a nice picture of what the results are by visually splitting the capital you need at financial freedom against your private pension and your state pension that will kick in a little bit later on down the line. So yeah, there you have it. I hope you found this tool really, really useful. Let me know in the comment section down below if you were surprised by the number that you got, or if you feel like sharing what your numbers were, feel free to do that as well. It'd be great to see what everyone is doing. Obviously, this is just an estimation, um, but if you think I've missed something that can actually make this tool a bit better at estimating the financial freedom number, let me know as well. And I'm happy to develop this tool even further so it can be more accurate and more realistic as possible. And yeah, if you did find this video really useful, I would really appreciate if you smash that like button. That does wonders for the YouTube algorithm and gets my video shown to a lot more people. And yeah, remember, I release a video every single week. So if you want to keep up to date with those, hit the subscribe button as well. See you later. Bye.